the, the excess energy comes from some, some type of background energy of the universe that's, that's being studied. And um, an example of, of a way to think about it might be the sun. Uh, if we step out into the clearing where, where the sun's really shining right down on us and we feel warmer, um, that's a type of radiant energy from the sun. There are other types of radiant energy. There are other types of energy coming in from the cosmos all the time. And this is a, a field of study that's in its, in its infancy as far as um, being in mainstream journals. There are mainstream journals that talk about zero-point energy, uh, but they don't go so far as to say that this is something that could be powering your house. They, and the term zero-point energy might just be talking about an effect rather than a cause, just like if we said that um, we can tap into the power of leaves fluttering on a tree, uh, that would be kind of silly because actually wind power isn't tapping into the power that's generated by little leaves fluttering, rather it's the wind that hits the blades. And, and the same, we may be looking at little quantum fluctuations of the vacu vacuum of space, they call it, the zero-point energy, which may be um, fluctuations that are actually caused by some more primal underlying energy. That's, that's one theory that I run into and makes a lot of sense to me. Because the amount of power that comes out of some of the non-conventional prototypes uh, that aren't publicized, but that um, my colleagues have seen in operation, and I've seen in smaller scale in operation, is an amount of power that's enough to do work, no doubt about it. We're talking about kilowatts, 